Welcome to the lecture on problem solving on statistical models in simulation. So, so far we have discussed about various kind of discrete and continuous distributions and as we know that in the processes uh, we will come across many kind of events which has uh, to follow either continuous or discrete type of distribution function and you have to calculate the different values. So, we will discuss few problems and we will just have an idea how to solve these problems. So, let us come to first problem. The first problem is regarding the hurricane which is to hit in a country and which is expected to follow Poisson distribution with mean of 0 0.8 per year. So, you have to find the probability of exactly one hurricane in a year and then probability of more than two hurricanes in a year. So, in the one case first case you have to simply find f x, in the second case you may use the cumulative distribution function value and then you can find the you know value of having more than two hurricanes in the year. So, if you take the first case the value of having one hurricane probability of exactly one hurricane in the year. So, in that case it will be so, we will are solving example 1 and that will be simply by putting the value in I mean in that. So, you have to have 1. So, P 1 you have to find and it will be P 1. So, as we know this is Poisson distributed and you know the values e to the power minus alpha and so it will be e raised to the power minus 0 0.8 minus alpha, alpha raised to the power x, so 0 0.8 raised to the power 1 and divided by x factorial. So, uh, so this is uh, 1 factorial and that will be given as 0 0.3595. So, that is how you find the probability of having the hurricane exactly one hurricane in the year. Now, probability of more than two hurricanes. So, you have to find the probability when hurricane value is more than two. So, it will be nothing but 1 minus probability of hurricane less than equal to 2. So, either you have no hurricane I mean that is value of 0 or 1 or 2. So, in that case you will have 1 minus p when x is 0 then p when x is 1 and p x as 2. So, this is how you can find the probability of having more than two hurricanes in a year and if you compute these values it will be 1 minus e raised to the power minus 0 0.8 then further 0 0.8 into e raised to the power minus 0 0.8 and then 0 0.8 square upon 2 factorial. So, it will be 2 and e raised to the power minus 0 0.8. So, this is all these 2 p 1 will be this and p 2 will be this. So, this if you compute this value comes out to be 0 0.0474. So, this is how these this kind of problems can be solved. Next problem is the lifetime in years of a satellite placed in orbit is given by the following PDF. F x is given as 0.4 e raised to the power minus 0 0.4 x when x is more than equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. So, here you have to find the probability of the satellite 
lasting at least 5 years. Now, in this case the probability is to be found for at least 5 years it has it should you know stay and for that probability x more than equal to 5 that means it must be so it is written that at least 5 years means 5 years or more now for that you will have 1 minus f of 5 so f5 will be up to 5 years now more than that means it will be 1 minus f of 5 and as we know fx is defined as 1 minus e raised to the power minus lambda t. You have been given the expression 0 0.4 as the lambda, lambda e raised to the power minus lambda t. So, that is how your lambda is defined. So, this value will come out to be 1 minus 1 minus e raised to the power minus 0 0.4 into t is 5 years. So, e, it will be e raised to the power minus 2. So, it will be e raised to the power minus 2 that is 0 0.1353. So, this is how you can find the probability of the satellite lasting at least 5 years. Now, what is the probability that the satellite dies between 3 and 6 years? So, for that you have to find the cumulative function value at 6 and cumulative function value at 3 and then you have to subtract it. So, if you try to find, so this is A part and the B part will be So, B part will be F 6 capital F 6 minus F 3 or you can write it in terms of probability value. So, probability value when its life is 3 to 6 it will be F 6 minus F 3. So, that is 1 minus e raised to the power minus lambda t. So, it will be 1 minus e raised to the power minus lambda into 6 minus 1 minus minus of in bracket 1 minus e raised to the power minus 3 lambda. So, that way it will be and it will be coming as 0 0.2105. So, once you calculate these values on calculation you will get the value of 0 0.2105. So, that is how you can compute the problems I mean you can solve these kind of problems. The next problem is the time to failure of a battery is Weibull distributed with parameters beta is 1 by 4, alpha is 1 by 2 years and nu is 0. So, this is uh, another distribution that is we have already discussed about it Weibull distribution which has 3 parameters alpha, beta and nu. Nu is given as 0, so it will start from 0 and then beta 1 by 4 and alpha is 1 by 2 years. Now, what is the probability that a battery will fail within you know 1.5 years. So, find the probability that battery will fail within 1.5 years. So, in that case as we know for the Weibull distribution function the expression for f x is beta by alpha x minus nu by alpha. So, when nu is not there x by alpha raised to the power beta minus 1 into exponential of minus of x by alpha raised to the power beta. So, that is how the f x is uh, calculated. Now, find the probability that battery will fail within 1.5 years. So, it means uh, the probability you have to find. So, this is example 3. So, within 1.3 years means it will talk about the cumulative distribution function value up to 1.5 years. Okay. Now, for that as we know the cumulative for Weibull 
we have already discussed the cumulative distribution function value f x will be 1 minus exponential minus of x minus nu by alpha raised to the power beta. So, that is how the cumulation cumulative probability can be found out. Now, in this case what we have is probability that battery will fail within 5 years within 1.5 years so it will be probability x less than 1.5 so that is nothing but f value 1.5 okay and that value will be computed as 1 minus exponential and in that case you have minus of x by alpha raised to the power beta. So, x is 1.5. So, it will be minus of 1.5 by alpha. So, alpha is in this case 1 by 2. So, 1.5 by 1 by 2. So, 1 by 2 that is 3. So, 3 raised to the power beta and beta value is 1 by 4. So, 3 raised to the power 1 by 4. So, this is how. So, if you solve this, you will get the value as 0 0.7318. Okay. So, things are clear in this. You know alpha, you know beta, you know nu. You must know the formula and in the formula, the cumulative function for f x will be 1 minus exponential minus of x minus nu by alpha raised to the power beta. So, nu is 0 here. So, x by alpha raised to the power beta x is 1.5 and beta is 1 by 2. Yeah, I mean alpha is 1 by 2. So, and 1.5 by 0 0.5 that is 3 raised to the power beta that is 1 by 4 and you get these values. So, the probability that the battery will fail within 1.5 years will be you know 0.7318. Then B part is the B part is to find the probability that battery will last for longer than its mean life. So, for that you have to first find the mean life of the battery. So, the mean life of the battery will be calculated using the expression for mean. So, mean life of battery it is calculated. So, its expression is it is given as nu plus alpha gamma of 1 by beta plus 1. Now, this is the mean life of the battery beta is 1 by 4 and alpha is 1 by 2. So, beta 1 by 4 alpha is 1 by 2 and nu is 0 that is how the values are given if you find the mean life of the battery nu is 0 then it comes alpha alpha is 1 by 2 and gamma of 1 by beta 4 plus 1 so 5. So, that is 1 by 2 of 4 factorial. So, this is 12 years. Okay. So, the mean life will be 12 years. Now, the probability that battery will last for longer than its mean life. So, battery has to has the life of more than 12 years. So, probability of lasting battery more than 12 years that is p x is more than 12. So, that will be 1 minus p x is less than equal to 12 okay, and that will be basically the cumulative distribution function. So, it will be 1 minus cumulative function of the value x equal to 12. So, it is nothing but 1 minus p x is less than equal to 12 and x is less than equal to 12 up to that that will be f I mean capital F value that is cumulative value. So, that is 1 minus f of 12 and once we get the f of 12 and then then you can get this value. So, this is computed further and it is coming out to be 0 
0.93. So, f of 12 can be computed by 1 minus exponential minus of you know x by alpha. So, 12 by alpha and, and then on that so, 12 by alpha 24 raised to the power 1 by 4. So, this way the value can be computed and that comes out to be 0 0.1093. So, this way this probability of battery which is will last more than its mean life will be 0 0.1093. The last part is the find the probability that battery will last between 1.5 and 2.5 years. Again such problems can be solved by finding the cumulative distribution function value at the two, x two points that is 2.5 and 1.5. So, f of capital F of 2.5 minus f capital F of 1.5. So, c value will be capital F of 2.5 minus capital F of 1.5 okay? means the battery will last up to 1.5 years it will be f capital F 1.5 battery will last up to 2.5 years it will be capital F or CDF function value of 2.5 for the variable distribution. So, in between CDF will be I mean that life will be so the probability value will be f of 2.5 minus f of 1.5 and if you compute this value it is coming as 0 0.0440. So, this you can further solve I mean you can find this by placing the value x as 2.5 in the expression and x as 1.5 in the expression and then further subtracting it and getting the values. So, this way you can solve such problems. Next problem is related to uh, the empirical distribution function. So, as we discussed you may face certain data which are not necessarily you know matching with certain standard distribution functions. So, then they are known as empirical distribution functions. You have certain data from there you have to find the histogram, you have to find the frequencies, you have to find the cumulative frequencies and then you have to find the graph and then maybe you can see that how much it is matching or how it looks. So, such are such type of analysis are done using this empirical distribution function. So, here in the, in, in the empirical distribution function you have the uh, case where the customers at a restaurant arrive in groups. So, customers at a restaurant are arriving either alone or with two persons or three persons or four persons maybe up to eight persons it may go they may go in the groups and uh, I mean it has been seen that there are three I mean uh, there has been cases for 300 persons and it was seen that for two persons so 55 times it was seen that with one person 30 number of occasions were seen with two num persons 110 and so for for the last 300 uh, you know for th 300 customers it was uh, seen and for two it was one so for two uh, a batch of uh, you know two we have we have seen to go 55 number of times so total 110 customers went in the group of 2, in the group of 3 total 45 customers have gone, in the group of 4. So, this way you have a case and you and it was seen that you have these many uh, cases. So, I mean as we see you have 1 person group 30 times, 2 person group 110 times, 3 persons 45, 4 persons 71 or so. So, there are you have 300 groups which are there and this is all together coming out to be 300 and for that now suppose you have to find the empirical CDF for such cases. So, for such cases what you have to do is you have to make a table and the table will talk about the relative frequency, the cumulative frequency and then finally, you can draw these uh, you know graph I mean graph. So, 
for such cases as we will see how can we draw the graph. So, what we see is you have arrivals per party So, it is varying from 1 to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Then the frequency is given, frequency is given as 30, 110, 45, 71, 30, 110, 45, 71 and then further 12, 13, 7 and 12. So, basically mistakenly it was said that you have 55 uh, groups or so, it is not that you have we have discussed about the groups which are coming. Uh, so, 2 persons per party and they are coming 100 times, 10 times. Similarly, 3 persons coming they are coming 45 times. So, altogether it is coming out to be 14 plus 4, 18, 25, 26, 27. So, this way 28 and then it will be coming as 300 yeah so it will be coming as 300 so you have 300 300 observations have been uh, you know captured and the eight number group has been seen 12 times seven number group have been seven times six number group have been 13 times like that so the two number group has been seen 110 times now this is the frequency so we will talk about the relative frequency relative frequency will be 30 by 300 so it will be 0 0.1 similarly it will be 0 0.37 it will be 0 0.15 it will be 0 0.24 it will be 0 0.04 it will be again 0 0.04 it will be 0 0.02 and it will be 0 0.04. Yeah. So, all together it comes out to be 1, how it will come as 1 that you can see from the cumulative relative frequency, cumulative relative frequency and if you compute that it will be 0.1, it will be 0.47, it will be 0.62, it will be 0.86, it will be 0.90, it will be 0.94, it will be 0.96 and this will be 1. So, this way you see that the cumulative distribution function, cumulative dis relative frequency can be calculated. Now, based on that you have to find the graph. So, you can find first the histogram. Now, if you find that what you see is now uh, we have to find the histogram which will talk about the relative uh, frequency and which will also from where there we will calculate the cumulative you know. So, uh, cumulative frequency anyway is not required in that case. So, once we try so, let us try to find that histogram and for that you have in y axis you have relative frequency which will be the value which is occurring in this table and in this you have number in a party or in a group. So, in the first one, so this will be 1 this will be 2, this will be 3, this will be 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now, further you have probability values as 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. and 0.5. So, what we see is for the person who are going alone their relative frequency is 0 0.1. So, it will come as this. Then with 2 it is 0 0.37. So, it will be here 0 0.37 will be somewhere here 
it will be matching with 2. So, this will talk about the person who are in the party in a group of 2, they have been going for 110 times whose relative frequency is 0 0.37, then for 3 it is 0 0.15, so this will be 0 0.15 and it will be 3. Similarly, for 4 it is 0 0.24, so 0 0.24 will be again somewhere here for 4. For 5 it is 0 0.04, so now it is less 0 0.04, so this is for 5, for 6 again it is 0 0.04, so it will be again 0 0.04, 7 is 0 0.02. So, it will be further here and then for 8 it will be 0 0.04. So, this is how you can compute the probability mass function uh, for such empirical cases such empirical distribution uh, function. Then you have to find the cumulative distribution function that will be known as empirical cumulative distribution function. So, for that you have again arrival per party. So, for that you have arrival per party. So, this is cumulative distribution function. So, this is arrival per party and you have cumulative relative frequency. So, in this you will have 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and ultimately you have to go up to 1 in this case. So, being the discrete type of distribution function, you will have the discrete values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, on 1 it is 0 0.1. So, we will go up to 0 0.1. Then on 2 it is going to 0 0.47. So, on 2 it will go to, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. On 2 it is going to 0 0.47, it is coming like here. Then on 3 it goes up to 0.62. So, here again it will go to 0.62. Then further on 4 it is going up to 0.86. So, further it will go up to 0.86. Then on 5 it will go up to 0.90. So, on 5 it will go to 0 0.90 and then 0 0.94, 6 it will be 0 0.94, 7 will be 0 0.96 and 8 will be ultimately 1. So, this will be so, this is the cumulative distribution function for such empirical distribution functions. Similarly, you may be dealing with cases where there may be a situation when there are certain frequencies given for certain intervals, maybe some some of the in, in, in some of the cases in the time event itself, in the time interval itself, number of failures which occur may be from 0 to 1 minute, 1 to 2 minutes, 2 to 3 minutes and the number of failures are given. So, in that case such are the cases of continuous distribution functions. In those cases, those in the time limits so you have to go in the order of uh, increasing time interval, uh, increasing time itself the interval anyway is specified. So, the frequency is given relative frequency can be calculated then 
uh, cumulative relative frequency can be calculated based on that you will have a continuous type of distribution function. So, here you have the discrete kind of distribution function whereas, in those cases you will have the ranges here and in the ranges you will have a graph which you will have some value and, and in that case you will have a continuous kind of graph which will talk about the continuous uh, cumulative distribution function for such cases. So, this way in the case of cumulative distribution functions also you can solve the problems. So, we have discussed about few of the distribution function examples. There can be many cases of many cases we may have the cases in case of Bernoulli distribution, we may have the cases related to gamma distribution where you have the parameters told and the event may be told to follow the gamma distribution. So, you may have to find the desired you know parameters or desired values and you can use those respectable values for finding those things. So, then this this is how you compute or you go on computing the parameters required in such cases. Thank you.